Mining Weekly Online is talking to James Campbell, the CEO of Rockwell Diamonds. James, you've had quite a dogged three years. Can you take us on this journey, how you got to this operational turnaround reported in the latest results? Thank you very much indeed, Martin, for that. The, the turnaround actually started when Dr. Mark Bristow took over the uh, CEO, acting CEO role just over three years ago. And he created a, a very clear strategy to focus on the assets in which were the foundation or the bedrock of the company, which is the Middle Orange River. And, and to dispose or to basically re-engineer those assets which were not making money at all, not breaking even. So when I came on board just under three years ago, I joined on, on the 1st of June three years ago, we started to give effect to that strategy itself. So if I look at briefly where we were three years ago and where we are now, Three years ago, we had Saxon Drift Mine, uh, which was our flagship producer in the Middle Orange, running at about 120,000 cubic meters uh, per month. That's now running at just under 180,000 cubic meters per month. We had a clip dam mining operation, which was loss making. We had Tirasano Mine, which was loss making. Fast forward to three years time, we have two new mines in the Middle Orange, Saxon Drift Hill Complex, running at 80,000 cubic meters per month, and New Yars Kral our newest uh, child on the block at just under 100,000 cubic meters per month. We have also sold our, our clip dam mine and we have converted our Tirasano mine, which was hemorrhaging significant cash to a royalty mining operation, which is now making good money for the company itself. So do you think you want a sort of sustainable path with this operational turnaround? The core focus, Martin, is to actually get to a half a million cubic meters of quality processed gravel per month. That number actually comes from the point that if we are processing one and a half million cubic meters per quarter, we will start to get earnings visibility. And how that translates from an operational perspective, it means we'll start to get a regular, predictable frequency of large, high quality diamonds. We have worked out that you need at least three processing plants each of which must have at least two open faces to give you that kind of optionality. And we're, let's say, three quarters of our way towards that half a million cubic meters uh, per month. We started at 120, as I said, three years ago. We're now up to just over 350,000 uh, cubic meters per month. And what will be your next step? Our next step is we're, we're looking and evaluating the possibility of expanding New Vyarskral. Now, this was always on the cards because New Vyars Kral has got a, a life of mine in excess of 10 years. And you would have seen by the way we've approached our work in Rockwell, we have a, a pragmatic phased approach to our development. We started off New Vyars Kral at 60,000 cubic meters per month. We've taken it up to just under 100. And we're looking at plans to see what we could do to take that up to 150,000 cubic meters. But not only that, last year we completed a preliminary economic assessment on our voters fund property. Voters Pun, again, is a very long life property which we haven't uh, done any work on in the last three years apart from upgrading the, the technical and economic aspects and it is very attractive. But in order to make a, a, a take a reasonable turn on Voters Pun, we need to mine it at a rate of around about 350,000 cubic metres per month. And we're looking at ways and means in which we can have a phased approach to actually get to that without resorting to a, a massive capital uh, in investment where we would have to seek investment from the market and others. And just tell us how you've made do during this time not going to the market in tough times. Two things really. Uh, the first thing is, is a fantastic team. You know, we, we managed to be able to deliver on uh, all that we said in terms of our, and our projects and our delivery. So that the team who I'm with at the moment are committed to turning Rockwell around and are committed to making Rockwell a successful mid-tier diamond mining company. The second thing is that it's a legacy issue, that we had a lot of kit and material floating around the different operations bought. So we were able, almost in the form of a jigsaw puzzle, uh, to put these pieces of, of kit together without having to go and buy significant capital assets. And I think that's, that's what enabled us to get to this point. And in a way we were reflecting last year that us being able to stress the balance sheet in this way by stressing the people and more importantly stressing the balance sheet in terms of moving our assets around was a great advantage at that point in our, in our company's history and could possibly be the, still the same now. But that may not be the same actually going forward, whereas we don't want to be put our balance sheet under such massive duress as we have done in the past. And you've 
managed to do this operational turnaround, when can you translate that into a net profit situation? It all goes back to our strategy. Once we actually get to that half a million cubic meters uh, per month, we'll start to get that earnings visibility. One of the things you'll see in our news release of today is we've published our seventh successive quarter of revenue growth. And we hope there could be one or two more in store with that. But once you get up to that half a million cubic meters, you start to get that kind of consistency, which will start to give you that bottom line profitability. Now, obviously, what we look at first is firstly getting that operational profit. Uh, you would have also seen a, a reduction in general and, and administration costs uh, during the quarter as well. And that trend will also continue. So we're looking at every means in which we can to take us to that strategy. And that strategy by diligent delivery on the ground, operational delivery, will eventually translate to bottom line uh, profits as well. And you have doggedly proceeded with this company to turn it around. Um, there are other companies in similar situations that maybe haven't done so. Are there consolidation opportunities arising? Martin, I firmly believe there are. If you look at the number of uh, private diamond mining companies as well as public companies listed both in Canada, Australia and in the, on the London market, there are a number of companies out there with single assets. And the one thing that Rockwell has is it has, a, as I've spoken about earlier, a, a great management team and it has supported by a, a wonderful board. And we feel with our focus on in South Africa, and we are very committed to South Africa, that we have a management team that could take on other assets and convert our organic growth strategy into a corporate strategy to become a successful mid-tier Southern African focused diamond mining company. And how would you fund something like that? I think there is an appetite for the mo at the moment in, in the diamond market and in the markets in general. We've seen that diamond pricing has remained very, very good, uh, especially amongst the, the larger stones. You may have seen uh, how we published the news on the 109 carat vivid yellow stone, uh, which was bought within six months of it actually being mined, uh, which is a phenomenal kind of uh, achievement, but it reflects the economics outside there. And I think the, the investment market is looking for two things at the moment. Obviously, it is looking for performance. And of course, I look for the same when I look for investing money. And I think Rockwell has begun to demonstrate that level of performance. And when you're in the diamond mining industry, it's not just the reflection, as I've said at the moment, on getting to half a million cubic meters, but you need to have significant assets under management so you can weather the bad times when they come as well. And so this is what we're looking for. We're looking for those opportunities and, and we're talking to a number of people in that regard. Uh, that was James Campbell talking to Mining Weekly Online.